What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're going to be looking at how to find the area of any parallelogram. So let's waste no time, let's go. Okay, so what do we need to know about a parallelogram before we can start? Well, a parallelogram just means that a shape has the same opposite lengths. So we can see this long length of this re rectangle here is the same as this opposite length just here. And this short length is the same as the short length over on the opposite side. But it also means that the angles are the same on the opposite corner. So I can see I have a 90 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here, so they're the same. But I also have a 90 here and a 90 here, and they're the same. But that's very easy on a rectangle, but those same rules apply for all parallelograms, including a rhombus or a diamond, depending on the way you're looking at it, just like this second example. So we can see this line here is the same as this line just here. And this line here is the same as the opposite line just there. But let's look at those angles again. I can see I've got a nice little acute angle here, which is exactly the same as its opposite angle just there. And then this obtuse angle is the same as the opposite obtuse angle, literally opposite it. So they're the rules. The lines and the angles are the same on opposite sides. So it essentially means that we can build these two shapes, rectangles or squares, and then rhombuses or diamonds. So let's look at this first example, this rectangle, and the rectangle has a base of eight and a height of three. And the formula we're gonna to use today to help solve this question is area equals base times height. So let's start to plug in some information. We have area equals the base, which is eight centimeters, and the height, which is three centimeters. So we have eight times three, area equals 24. Now we can't just leave it at 24 because we need to put our units in place. So to understand what units we're going to be using, we need to look at first the units we were originally working in, which were centimeters. So I can put my centimeters in place, but then we need to understand what area actually is. An area is essentially the amount of space the shape covers on a tabletop. So if I was to put this rectangle on a tabletop, how much area does it take? Well, it's very hard to think about a unit of measurement for something that's not just a straight line. So many, many years ago, someone very clever decided that the best way to measure an area is to cut it into squares. And in this case, I would have eight columns. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three rows. One, two, three. Now, what we should find now is if I count all these individual squares, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We have the same as my answer. So I should have 24, but what do I have? I have 24 centimeter squares. And that's why we use the measurement centimeter squared or meter squared or kilometer squared, but the squared part is because we're chopping it into literal squares. Let's have a look at the rhombus then. And in this case, we've been given two measurements. We've been given the base, and again, we've been given the height. Now, something to notice that's very important. If we're given this height, we need to know the actual height from this line here to this line here, not the measurement of the side line, because this line, let's call it A, would actually be slightly longer than this line B. So it's very important to know exactly what you're working with. And in this case, we know it's the height because I've been given a straight line to show my arrow. So I know that it goes all the way from the base to the top. Therefore, it must be our height. So just like before, the formula for working out the area of a rhombus when we're given the base and the height is simply area equals base times height. So again, let's start plugging in some numbers and have area equals base, which is five and height, which is six. So area equals five times six, which is 30. What measurement we work in? That's right, centimeters squared. But let's understand why that works then, because it doesn't look like a rectangle, so why are we using the same formula as the formula for working out the area of a rectangle? Well, the only difference between this and a rectangle is it's been slightly pushed to one side, which means we end up with this weird little triangle here but that is exactly the same as this little triangle just here that we're missing. So what we've essentially done is just had a rectangle and just applied some force to this corner here and just pushed it ever so slightly to the side and made it a little bit slanty or wonky. But for the extra piece 
that we've just gained by doing that, we've lost a little bit over here. So it's still an equal rectangle, which is why the formula area equals base times height still works. But there is another way. Let's have a look at this rhombus. And again, it is a rhombus just put on its side, so a little more like a diamond. But in this case, I've been given the two lengths of the diagonal sides. I have three centimeters for the length across the middle, and I have six centimeters for the length top to bottom. So in this case, the area actually equals diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two. And we're going to understand why in a moment, but let's just plug these numbers in for now. So therefore, area equals diameter one, let's say the three centimeters. So three times diameter two, which is six centimeters, divided by two. Let's do the top rows first of all. And therefore, area equals three times six, which is 18, divided by two. And therefore, area equals nine centimeters squared. And let's understand why that is. Well, the only bit that's confusing is the divide by two. Why am I dividing the answer by two? Well, if I end up measuring this, times this, what I've done is I've made this rectangle and three times six would be the area of this full rectangle. But I'm not looking for the full rectangle, I'm only looking for the rhombus inside it and the rhombus inside it will actually take exactly half of that rectangle's amount, which is why we divide by two. So now it's your turn. Here are two parallelograms for you to work out the area of. Put your answers in the comments section, I'm gonna make sure I mark them all. Try and use the same tactics that we've been using in this lesson. Press pause on the video now, good luck. And there you have it. That is how to work out the area of parallelograms. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it was, head on over to themathshelter.com where you're gonna find loads more videos to help you with everything you need to know about your year group's maths. But for now guys, I'm gonna see you in another video. Peace out.